Hey, what's up, everybody? You found Mind Pump. This is Lenny, by the way. He's uh, my good luck friend over here. Anyways, hey, do you want to win a free program? Here's what we're going to give away today. MAPS PED. This is the most advanced MAPS program around. It's a double split routine. This is not for weak people. This is for advanced people, and we're going to give it away for free. Here's how you can win MAPS PED. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, and if your comment is the best comment, if we decide your comment is amazing, better than all the other ones, if all the other comments are stupid and yours is great, you'll get a free MAPS PED program. Just make sure you check the comments because we'll put underneath, you win, and that'll be awesome. Now, everybody else, subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications so that you know when we drop these episodes because we give away stuff all the time. You got to get in there in the first 24 hours. Also, one more thing before we start this awesome podcast, and trust me, this podcast is awesome. We have a huge sale. MAPS Aesthetic is 50% off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle is 50% off. Both half off. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just make sure you use the code May, May Special. That's right, May Special for the discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Hey, dude, just, Justin came to fuck. Look Ooh, how good he looks right whoa. now. Whoa. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he came to fuck. I mean, it was the way I was walking. No, you just, there's something kinda, disturbing when you say it that he way. He just so. is like, look at that. There is. Look at that. Uh, uh, I mean, that's how I was walking. He just so looked good, dude. Hey, thanks, what's Like thanks, a sexy lumberjack. What's the, what's the, the nose? Lumber sexual. What's the nose thing that holds the glasses? Oh, you like, like this? What's that called? Yeah. yeah, so it's like an Easter Island uh, statue. And uh, Did you, you really didn't know that? Easter Island? No. Yeah. Damn. Oh, no. man. Those massive heads. So many megalithic structures. Like Adam, we got to get you aware Adam of. Adam needs to know because yeah. he's just going to get manipulated by the powers <laughs> that run shit. I know, right? Like, yeah. they uh, they control the world, Adam. Bro, this, look right here. Yeah. See this? Yeah. This is actually what's happening. That's <laughs> literally the portrayal Listen, you guys of behind-the-scenes power. You don't know the risks I'm taking by wearing this shirt right now, yeah. but I feel like it's my responsibility to let everybody know. Yeah. This yeah, this because now this they're going to follow you and, and get through all your stuff. This is what's happening. The lizard people and the aliens are working together. You know who's controlling the whole thing? Mm. Illuminati. Yeah, definitely. And, and then they're just playing chess with us. That's the Illuminati's happening. at the top. Yeah. So. Right. And so now the, the the lizard guy and then the alien, they're like, hey, let's yeah. move you guys like pawns. And, and we're just. We're, it makes dude. It's it says it all right. This there. is. I mean, it's for hundred percent. Maybe yeah. my favorite shirt you've worn. Yet. <laughs> I th- it's I, so I, wild, dude. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been a fan of all of them. I love that one. Yeah, it's what did you? Is that yeah. okay? Now, are you getting them all from the same place, or do you have like random places? No, nah, random places. Yeah, Jessica will go on and just she'll be like, "This is funny," and she'll order it, and then I'll see it and I'll be like, "Oh my god, I gotta wear that." Yeah, yeah, it's a good time. It yeah. makes sense, you know, for now. Yeah. To- Dude, uh, and you look very lean, by the way. So you look like you're here to fuck. You look like you're <laughs> lean as hell. <laughs> yeah, and I'm, and it's not just me. It's not just me that's thinking this. Oh, okay, so here's the deal, right? Wait so, a so the show has been doing well on YouTube now for a little while. We've had the podcast forever. We I'll cl- be honest, your hair is uh, taking quite an upgrade. It's nice, huh? Since uh, okay, so yeah, so here's the cuts. deal. So here's the deal, right? So uh, podcast has been we've been we kill everybody in podcast. Nobody comes close. But YouTube, <laughs> oh yeah, we slay We're recently. S- super humble guys. It's too, just by the way. just a fact, right? <laughs> it's just slay. A, I'm just reporting the facts. YouTube only recently have really paid attention to it and has just started to grow, right? Yeah. Now, the, the comments on YouTube, harsh. They can be very harsh. They are. Right? Yeah. So they started. It's weak. This is where they started, okay? They started by saying things like, oh, three, guy, three dudes are out of shape telling me how to work out, right? Yeah. yeah. You know what comments I'm seeing now? Well, hmm. uh, Three roided out dudes <laughs> talking oh, yeah. about health and fitness. Oh, dude. Yeah, we've crossed over. Bro, we're just, yes, we're killing it. I, you got to love. <laughs> That's you gotta, the best compliment. You got to love the YouTube extreme <laughs> roiders. Yeah, yeah, we're dude. either fatter on roids. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can't just be like healthy no, you, dudes, you right? Can't just be healthy and have muscles. That's that's not the case. I did the wrong steroids. I'm getting fatter. <laughs> wow. No, I saw that today and I was like, oh man. Uh, I hey, feel, speaking of nice. YouTube, though, I got to bring it up. Wow, oh, it's nice. So, um, as of this this podcast recording, so this is live already now. If you haven't gone over to our other YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. That's where we have all the exercises. Yeah, and so something we're we're starting to play with. So uh, if you're listening to this for the first time, even if you're listening on the podcast, appreciate any sort of support in this direction to let us know if this is an area we should put some time, effort, and money. Because it's not cheap to do this, but I think this may be something we can, we start doing in the future, which is... Welcome back to Mind Pump TV. I'm your host, Serene Wilkin. I'm taking you guys through another home workout today to grow your glutes. You will complete 15 to 20 reps of each exercise and repeat the sequence up to four times. Let's begin. 
this follow along style workout. So mm. Serene is leading. Well, they actually train you through the video. Yeah, that's right. right. So you'll be able to, and it's, uh, you know, Eli's got all kinds of great edits to where it's got a timer on there, shows you a, a progress bar to how far through the workout. So those people that have TVs in their at home gyms or have mm. an iPad, they could shoot it up and they want to follow along a workout or in your living room. Serene is going to start doing some of these. And if it gets enough traction, we may put some time and effort. Now, to be completely transparent, it's not. It's very expensive for us yeah. to do that. It's all free content. We're doing it anyways. Um, but if if it gets enough good feedback, it might be something that we then continue. we'll do it. Yeah. 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 Speaking of Serene, you guys it looks know, super cool. Yeah, I tell you, I hired her to train uh, my boy. I heard you. I heard you say smart. that. Now I know. Um, Str yeah. Strategery. Strategery. <laughs> yeah. Very yeah. smart. I'm sure, she's he's going to listen a little bit. Well, more. that's the thing, yeah. you know. It, okay, so okay, have you got you guys have all tried to train your girls or your wives, right? It's yeah. very hard. Yeah. Because you're not ju you're not their trainer. You're their boyfriend or their husband, and you know they don't want to listen or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've had this happen. And when I've trained other family members too, right? Training my kids, uh, it's it's like either I'm like <clears throat> making them do it, and then, I, then I'm like developing a bad relationship with exercise. Or right, right. So I knew if I hired somebody, so I'm hiring somebody. He's more likely to listen, be polite. Plus, she's a female, so he's not going to feel like he needs to whatever show off or whatever. And uh, I think he's going to do a good job. And she's mm. an excellent trainer. She's well, an amazing. You think trainer. he's not going to train show off? Well, yeah. are we just going to ignore the fact that she's attractive too? I mean, right. Uh -huh. <laughs> you just you skipped over all her. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> she's smart. She's a good trainer. She's like, and she's hot. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, yeah. Teenage. You'll teen pay attention. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, I, think you'll, I think I think you'll pay attention. Hey, for Dad, sure. can I work out every day? Yeah. 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 Calm down, son. Yeah. Yeah. Two days a week for now. I'm really into this fitness thing. Yeah. Now. No, but today's his first day, so I'm excited, man. Oh, uh, no, well, that's great, man. Yeah. Now I know. Now, Doug, you had already hired her, right? Yes. Yeah. How long? How long has she been been training right now? About two months. Brianna's been going with her. Yeah. Okay, she so, does such a good. She's a great trainer. Yeah, she's very good. Awesome. Have you seen her train? Really? Yeah, I have. I have. She's yeah, a no. really good trainer. I originally thought I was like, I, I saw her the first couple times. I was like, oh, that's really sweet that she's doing that. Like, and then I started seeing her doing more. I'm like, damn, she's uh, Doug. Are you paying her? And then Doug's like, yeah, of course I'm paying. Her. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, damn. I thought she was just going out of her way every day. I was like, that was really nice. That was really detailed. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. Really spent some time. Yeah, that's. There. I, mean, yeah. She, I mean, there's a difference, right? So it's so funny, right? Even trainers, all trainers are like this. There's like uh, paid helping you, and there's like helping you just being nice helping yeah, you, right? <laughs> oh, like, you need workout help? Here's yeah. a here's a sheet. Oh, what paper. are you working on today? You yeah, know, yeah. Like, yeah. Here, do this. Here's yeah. an exercise versus, versus putting like, your professional hat on yeah, of and course. like really going to town. Of course, right? but so. she does a good job, and I'm excited because uh, my kid is like he's such a math, science, computer dude. That if he doesn't like, if I don't do structured something with him, he'll just he'll live on that fucker all day long. Yeah. So I'm like, no, dude, you need to. So update train. us, uh, update us on this experience of this book launch so far. How's it going so far? Like, is the uh, is the fame getting yeah. to your head yet? Huh? Do you feel? I'm seeing all kinds of tags with the book and people receiving them now. Yeah, so yeah. there's some. Lo looks like there's a bit of a hype uh, machine going on. It's right now. yeah, it seems to be doing all right. So on on Amazon, I'm tracking the like how it ranks on Amazon. And so with Amazon, you have like big categories like all of health, right? All of health is a massive category, which includes self-help books, psychological health, you know, nutrition. Some of the some of the biggest sellers of all time are in that category. Like Mark Manson's book mm -hmm. is in there uh, as well, right? And then under that, there's smaller categories. So a subcategory, which is still big, but not nearly as big, is exercise and fitness. And then you get small categories like stretching, quick workouts, weight training, whatever. So in the small categories, it's ranked number one in new releases and even in bestsellers. In the larger cat exercise and fitness, it's like top, I think it's in top uh, 20 for uh, bestsellers. I think it's def I think it's two, one or two for exercise and fitness for new releases. And then health, it's ranking. It hasn't. It's not ranking in bestsellers yet because that's just a huge. But but in in uh, new releases, it's doing pretty. It's like top. 50. So I'm a little disappointed in you. Oh man, I thought for sure. What did I do? I thought for sure by now I would have received a picture of it in Barnes and Noble from you, and you would have gone down. I haven't gone in yet. I can't believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm a little ashamed of you. Yeah, why? Uh, why is that? Whoa! I mean, you're ashamed of me. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I'm just. I start crying. Come on, man. I feel like uh, I would. I mean, yeah. if my book was in Barnes he and Noble, he wants you to go all celebrity and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, am. Yeah. I yeah. mean, even if you okay, let me back. I've had people send me pictures, like friends and family. Yeah, I mean, I I didn't expect you to go take a picture of it and post it online. That's yeah. not your style. Yeah. But I I thought you would post to to us like pr mm. privately. I thought for sure by now. I, at least I would have. I would have went down there, saw it, took a picture of it, sent it to you guys yeah. been like hey this is a cool moment yeah. right now and it's a cool moment it's a cool moment in the business i mean 
everybody and, and Doug can attest to this, right? Because you and Doug both have done the uh, you know online marketing courses yeah. way back when and stuff like that. And part of the formula for uh, you know scaling an e-commerce business, they say, is to to write a book. Yeah. But something that you kind of made a path to yourself and us when we first started is like, I don't want to write a book until someone wants to pay me yeah. Yeah. to write a book, which I thought that was kind of cool. And that was always a goal, right? So the goal was to write a book. You could have wrote a book four years ago. Yeah. It's the same content you've been talking about yeah. forever. Well, you've refined that that message uh, over the last few years and everything we've talked about on the show. So it was like a, the perfect timing to put it all into you know word form. So Well, so far, the most excited I've gotten uh, is because I expected people who listen to the show to be very supportive. Um, and we have the great, we have the best uh, fans, uh, you know, the best, best supporters um, ever. But some of the best uh comments I've gotten were from like I got I got like this one lady she was like in her 50s and she sends me a message and she's like hey I just read your book I had no idea I'm gonna start lifting weights and when I see something like that I'm like that's what makes me excited because yeah. never would she have and she told me she's like I would have never considered doing resistance training yeah. until I read your book and that's the idea the idea is let's let's <clears throat> let's let's change the the fit the, the failed fitness paradigm because again, resistance training has gotten such a, a terrible stigma, and that's our job as all tra as trainers. And at the end of the day, look, I was I've been a trainer way longer than I've been a yeah. podcaster and, a, and, a, and writing a book. My goal is is the same as it's always been. There's get a few people. There, there's a few family members of mine that uh, I had get the book that I'm I'm most interested. In. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would love to hear what they're. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, my, my brother too. I can't really? wait until he reads through it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's people that I'm like. Because the thing is, those are the people that I really want to see read this that I think it's going to be most impactful. If you're really into fitness, you're kind of aware of them. If you're listening to this podcast, right? Mm -hmm. and unless you're brand new into listening to this, if you've been listening to us for four years, yeah. like it's just, it's just everything we talk about, but put in one. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. like, it's not going to be new knowledge mm -hmm. to those people. But for somebody who is, you know, still chasing fat loss through cardio or the group X mm -hmm. type classes or all these yeah. high intensity type workouts. To me, those are the people that are going to really. So has Adam's post been getting at you at all? Which yet? ones? Uh, just all of them. Oh, all of them. <laughs> all of <his> memes <laughs> and shit. He's been <laughs> roasting. I got to, hey, here's the thing. Yeah. I, I build them up in here uh, and then I got to bring it back down. down. Yeah, I got to take them down uh, a little yeah, bit. I don't yeah, want to yeah. get too. I think they're hilarious, dude. I showed my kid, I showed my son the one where Bro. You, the, that you posted of me in, the, in, a, <laughs> it was, in, in a onesie, which I don't yeah. know how you got my face on that. Oh, it was Oh, I showed my son, dude. He was dying. Oh, so yeah. good. Yeah, it's so, if it, you know what? Okay, we're from a different generation. I don't know how they are nowadays, but for for me, when your friends are doing that to you, it's love. Yeah, it dude. Is love. It's love. Like, oh, Adam's, exactly. Adam's it's, showing me some love right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The best one I'm was about me. Hey, the meme that and uh, this is I, Carlos is just crushing it with the memes. Like oh, he yeah. he sent me the one I did. The last one was the one one year after Sal's book. Oh yeah. And he's, he's, <laughs> he's leaning against a phantom. I mean, it's totally not his body. It's like some little like five foot eight like yeah. you know influencer kid or oh, some totally shit. something you would have seen. Oh like, my one god. Of the gurus in our yeah space, yeah the dude. private jet yeah. behind him. He's <laughs> leaning against a Rolls Royce. No oh, big deal. Just making money oh, yeah i think that was yeah. so hilarious. oh look i scratched my car yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, look at my approach just shape. carry like some lambo keys around you yeah, know yeah. just because look at my, look at my <laughs> yeah. protein i love that when they would post like a, a protein shake but it's sitting on like a you know, yeah. like a flamborghini yeah, yeah. Get the fuck <laughs> out of cash. Yeah. that's not your car <laughs> you're full of shit oh, especially man, when you find you out roll. especially when you find out these movie sets in la like where they have like a fake private jet. You yeah, just, you that's rent wild. It. Dude, that's you take wild. pictures. It's so brilliant, but it's like, man, it, everything is so fake. You, you oh, know, you dude. go through all that stuff, and it's, especially in the influencer realm. Do you guys like, think it's so going to come reasons. undone? Is it going to come undone? Like, is it all going to un? Like, people media has been fake since to. day one, dude. Yeah, yeah, but here's the thing, and this is why I don't know because I was actually just hit the tipping point. Well, think? this is kind of a, a, along some of this, the conversations we've been having around. Like you brought up the other day, like. You know Fox and CNN, right? Yeah. Like there is, I don't think there's anybody yeah. in the at least the United States that doesn't know how biased each one of those channels are. Yet millions still tune in, of course, to them because right? you want to smell your own fart. That's well, that's it. so it's like you're aware it's biased as shit, but you still want to consume that content. So there's a part of me that goes, people don't care. Yeah, it's and they like, have completely the opposite like narrative. Like, so they just create their own stories now. It's like, is this even based on real shit anymore? <laughs> Are we just like writing things? No, no. So you think that it's going to hit a tipping point where it, it's there's so much fakeness through social media because it's everyday people maybe doing it. Yeah, that at some point everyone's been like, okay, I'm done. I, I mean, I I think that, but then I what makes me think maybe not is like what I just said about Fox and CNN. It's just like. 
people know it's fake, but I don't care. I still want to get yeah. it's, uh, it's almost it like Jerry Springer, itch, like, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. There was, I mean, I think when Jerry Springer first, like, you know, hit the hockey stick, mm-hmm. it, people thought, like, wow, this is really just, just drama. And it, maybe it's real, real drama and not like dramatized, right? Yeah, that yeah. they weren't, they weren't staging it. <laughs> Even when people, Figured out it was it was completely staged. The real world, remember, like on MTV, is now the real world. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. real world is what we're dealing with. You know, I'm glad you brought that up. So for, this, for Illuminati, this is, this is great for <laughs> <laughs> the powers that be. Hey, I, yeah. yeah, Illuminati NWO. guy with the shit. Yeah. Sorry, anyway, sorry. I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to talk like this yeah. for the rest of the show. <laughs> so anyway, so someone would be like, Sal knows. You know yeah, I mean? or like this. Like, yeah, yeah, just do the. What is that? The eye thing that they I don't do? Know, whatever. Get the hell out of here. Fucking stupid. Uh, no. So the real world. That's a great example. The real world on MTV. TV was the first reality show ever. Now the original season literally was let's film everything. Yeah. Let's not try to create drama. Let's not tell people what Maybe to say. Maybe throw some booze in there, but we'll see what happens. But they didn't. They didn't do anything. Yeah. They just filmed the first one yeah, yeah. and they made the show. After that, they started to create and yeah. script engineer it. Yes, because they found that when people did stupid, crazy shit, like oh my god, this gets yeah, so much. Their more. views just. So watch the, the first real world, and what you see is like people getting along and just kind of acting normal. Yeah, and yeah. then after that, it got like, what the hell is going on? You know, yeah. T- yeah, even though they have the crazy backgrounds that are completely opposite, they they tended to get along in the beginning. That's right. You know, technically, it's this. It was the second reality show. You know, what the no- first one was technically what was cops. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's right. Cops was technically what a great. The, what yeah. a great little statistic game there. Right, right. I would have lost that. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, that were they were technically the first reality show. <laughs> And I, I mean, I, I'm, sh- I'm sure that's where a lot of these shows started to piece it together. Like, oh my God, people love cops because they're, you know, fucking beating people up and grabbing freaking, you know, people yeah. that are breaking yeah. the law. High There's drama. Yeah, yeah, it's the drama, right? So I think they pieced that together. And then sure enough, same thing with your know, real world. They probably noticed that, oh, wow, the episodes where a big fight happens, you know, yeah. that's the ones. And so I they just think, play into that. I think that they, the, the cops need, police officers need uh, PR now. I think they do. They need oh, yeah. PR today more than ever. A show like that, I think, would be smart to bring back on the air. I wouldn't even sign up to be a cop right really? now. Oh, oh man, no to talk about such a a, a thankless I'm, job. I mean, yeah, it, what a. I mean, and shout out to all of our, our. I know we have a lot of uh, officers that listen. I know we got a lot of firefighters that listen. By the way, I've been wanting to do this. So glad this. Oh, when this he way. does the finger thing. Something yes. Good by the happen. way, wag 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 wag. So uh, we. I've had many times where someone's messaged me that, oh yeah, our our, our our you know entire firehouse listens on lives. Yeah. So if you're listening right now and you're in a firehouse or a station and you're, you're with a big group of of uh, officers or firefighters and you listen to the show, message me either DM me or email one of us and and I would love to give you guys a shout out. So I think that'd be cool. To, yeah. Because we get I get that and then they don't ever tell me like which, where they're stationed at or where 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 they're working yeah. from. I'd love to shout out like a I've gotten that a few times from some military bases too. So yeah. I would love to see that as well. Yeah, yeah. man. You're yeah. signing I mean that's a that's a that's a tough thankless job. Right. But it's a bo- that's But a yeah, back line. to what I was starting to say that. Right. I I think it's always been challenging. I think right now Imagine like Ugh. imagine you being a cop right now and heading into a situation and like that is you know that could be no, potentially dangerous yeah. and you and everything that's going on in the news like scary dude it is yeah. dude you know what it reminds me of I had a um, a, a friend of mine who this is someone that worked out my gym and he was a Vietnam vet and he told me what it was like coming home from Vietnam mm-hmm. and getting and people were spitting on him and this is my dad's yelling, experience and he and he's like man it was it was terrible yeah. i mean the yeah. shit that i experienced out there and they come home and i'm being hated even though I was drafted. You exactly. Know? He was drafted, didn't want to be there, was just trying to survive and make, you know, things like manageable. And then coming back home, it's like you're oh, I'm finally home and people are throwing shit at you, spitting in your face. What? It, yeah, you dude, know I, just, I didn't just know well, because disrespectful. The, the Vietnam War was heavily protested. Right? I know that. And so that's why. And so then there were, and then there was the, was one of the first times where war where there were reporters filming and reporting in real time. And so you had like war okay here's the deal war is war war is fucked yeah. and a lot of crazy shit happens so they report on some of the stuff and you know it, it just it was like it was violent there was terrible shit then the reports of, of you know soldiers doing things that you know maybe they shouldn't have but they were actually quite uh rare or whatever for the most part uh you know doing a good job and so it was just they were viewed and villainized they were villainized as bad people these soldiers going out and killing 
innocent people and they're bad or whatever. Oh, wow. And so, and that was the media. The media promoted that, and so people came back. I didn't know it was to that extreme though, where a oh, soldier dude. coming back and then like our own people spitting on them. Yeah. Have you seen the movie uh, Born on the Fourth of July? No, I have not. Okay, so that'll highlight a little bit yeah. of, of that. That shows kind of what happened. That's why, I mean, you brought up the point a long time ago, like 60s and like what we went through with all that versus like 2020. Like it's just like you put it in perspective, it was pretty damn crazy back Dude. then what we went through. Yeah, it was so, a crazy time. A lot crazier. Speaking of crazy, yeah. did you guys hear, so this kind of made, I think it made it to mainstream news. Did you guys hear about this kid who almost died because he took eight scoops of pre-workout? What? This is true. Wow, really? Yes. So apparently it's this YouTuber. Is uh, this new trending or what? Yeah, I just, some a couple people sent what it to me. A terrible idea. So I, apparently this kid, he does YouTube and he like he dry scoops, which is just you take a scoop, you put it in your mouth, wash it down with water. By the way, you guys didn't invent that. So stupid. I used to do that back in the day because it was just easy. <laughs> right. Because like, you didn't have a sugar to get cup. it in. That was something you only did because you couldn't get it. I've done that with protein powder. Yeah. 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 Try doing that with a big ass scoop of protein powder. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. You're not tough because you dry yeah. scoop. Big and deal. You just cough yeah. and poof. Yeah. Yeah, but, but anyway, apparently he did this and he did eight scoops and like to show like, oh, you know, whatever, I'm yeah. crazy. Yeah. And got, it, I mean, one pupil was dilated. The other one was constricted. <laughs> his, he had brain swelling. Well, that's had to, scary. had to like crack some his skull. I mean, some of these pre-workouts got 400 milligrams of, of caffeine in it, dude. Imagine dude. that right there. People don't realize this. Caffeine is deadly yes. if you go uh, if you go past a certain amount it will kill you it's not like it just cuz it's in because it's well, in your energy drink doesn't mean it's super especially safe. when you go from that to that right like if you're somebody who drinks 400 milligrams a day and then you work to 500 then 600 then 800 then 900 then 1000 that's one thing but to go like oh i'm going to take 2400 milligrams of caffeine oh, in yeah, one dude. shot uh -huh. oh, oh, his heart was like feeling like it was going to burst out of his chest oh yeah so he had he like created like a situation where he gave himself strokes and they had to like Apparently had to release pressure in his skull because his brain. Well, that's was what I was thinking when you're talking about the the eyes pupilating like that. Pupilating. That's not a word. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> pupilating. Yeah. yeah. You had me fooled, bro. So, your yeah, eyes are right. trying to make up a word. <laughs> Do you feel it? Do you feel it? I don't my, know. My eyes pupilating. Dude, I got an ab cramp last night talking to Katrina. Those was, are the worst. Oh, my. it was so weird. It, I we were talking. I don't remember what we were talking about, but some, we were talking about something business stuff, right? And it like slowly, like I was like, oh, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, I don't know. And then it was like, whack! And then it hit me. And it was like, oh, made my whole body shake, dude. It was so bad. So I get those oh, if I, my if my carbs are really low for a while and my electrolytes are off. So I, is I, that what happened? Yeah. So okay. I, I was, I obviously have been super low carbohydrate, right? Which is why you look incredible. Well, thank you. By the way, Sal, well, thank you. Le oh, very, yes. very lean. Adam's today. one of those guys. No, I'm just honest. Yeah. Adam's one of those guys that he gets leaner, looks bigger. Yeah. You know what I mean? You I just so, look huh? smaller. I don't mm -hmm. feel that way. Yeah. But thank you, though. I need that. I yeah. need that today. I Actually, on along my diet, so uh, interesting things uh, unfolding right now. Oh, yeah? So, I, you know, I thought for sure that I would see a, a pretty immediate uh, difference in my psoriasis from the meat. And oh, like, on the Adam Navor diet? Yeah. And initially, yeah. I, I kind of did a little bit. Now- It's not trending yet. <laughs> What I think started to happen after a few days of eating that much red meat every single day, since since obviously that I was trying to stick mostly to meat, uh, I'm going to target red meat primarily just because it's- the, So nutrient dense. Right. So what I was noticing was uh, my psoriasis not only was not getting better, but it was actually like starting to itch and bother me more. And normally- when I do something like that, I'm that I know obviously offends it, like high sugar or ice cream, things like that, like dairy, I, I it, like hour after eating, I itch. It just oh that fast. Oh yeah, it's that obvious. Oh, wow. It's that obvious. As soon as I I digest it, I can wow. already start to notice. And sometimes, like that's how I've. I mean, the the psoriasis has almost been a blessing in disguise because. It, it cues that, like, right, like, I could be totally fine, and then I'll be sitting there an hour afterwards watching TV, and then all of a sudden I reach down, I start scratching, I'm like, oh, shit. It's like my grandfather when his corns act up. It's going to rain. <laughs> What's the matter? I know, what is that? The pressure, yeah. I had a client like that, too. But, my niece uh, thinks it's going to rain today. But listen to this, dude. The red meat actually might be some of the problem. So uh, I've noticed it. Now, where it really stood out to me was, I had a couple days. So originally I had all my like butcher box meat prepared. I was cooking like five pounds of it at a time right. and then I was eating it like that. Well, there's been a couple times now where I've ran low and I didn't have it access. So I've done a uh, smash burger and five guys where I just had the patties. I have mm -hmm. them just order mm -hmm. the patties and I eat just the patties alone. So basically uh, you high quality grass fed meat and now you're grain fed, you know, 
And that's what made me go, oh my God. Because I noticed when I, here's what also, I kind of noticed the original, I think I talked about the psoriasis feeling a little bit better. But that also could have been because I was at such a low calorie intake mm -hmm. from what I was before and I was offending it so much with everything else. So I felt, oh, maybe this is getting it better. But then it like plateaued and then it even got a little worse and it got worse when I noticed I had these types of foods. Wow. So since then, I started introducing more white meat. So I've had chicken, I've had veal, uh, I've had ground turkey, and I, uh, I've had uh, salmon. And so I, I, and I started to limit the amount of red meat. Well, veal's red too, but it's not as fatty. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, or like closer to white meat, sure, I feel sure, like, sure. right? So uh, more white meats and fishes and things like that. Yeah. So just basically mixing up from just ground beef, which I was eating primarily. And already started to notice the the psoriasis. Not Inflam so you're, it's inflammatory. It must be the fatty acid profile or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you know what's interesting? I've had two clients that had to be that had to limit red meat. One lady, it's the only person I've ever worked with that actually had an intolerance, a borderline allergy <laughs> to red meat. Now she thought it was because she got Lyme disease, uh, you know, years prior, and I know mm -hmm. that can cause that in some people. Mm -hmm. The other guy. Literally, we become inflamed when he ate too many animal products, especially meat. And it was, we tested it so many times. And this just goes to highlight the individual variants with nutrition. You yeah. cannot, you cannot state yep. this enough. There's such a huge, you, the things you wouldn't even imagine, it could be so different from person to person. Well, mm -hmm. I, I even find it fascinating how I can already start to tell a difference between like, the grass fed versus eating like the regular meat from like five guys or from um a uh, smash burger like what a difference it made too so what i think so kind of where i'm moving now is i'm slowly starting to introduce other things right so i i let avocado in there the other day i let uh um some some bell peppers and onions in there all these things seem fine i actually think it has something to do with my my meat where i'm or my protein source and so i'm gonna try and if I eat red meat, I'm not going to eliminate it completely. If I eat it, I'm going to do my best to only have grass fed and see what happens. And then I'm going to have more chicken and veal wow. and like others as salmon and other sources of, of protein. Wow. So I imagine that would make a, a difference. I mean, just the, in terms of the quality of the meat, because uh, I, I went through a little bit of that when I was in the carnivore diet. Notice a big difference. When you I did, had, huh? Yeah. yeah. I, it's when I, the intake is real high. Yeah. I know we talk about it, right? But I exact I wouldn't have noticed it except exactly. for I, I was eating so if much. The volume's way up. Yeah, I've yeah, never ate that much red meat before. Mm -hmm. I've always liked red meat, and it's always in my diet. But I think when it's only in my diet once or twice at most in the day, it wasn't enough for me to like to really register on that. It's when you were just eating it all day. Yeah, when yeah. I'm eating it all day, that's my main source of calories. Then I notice it. Yeah, that's why I tell people, people ask me, is grass-fed worth it? And I say, look, if you eat red meat every once in a great while, I mean, it makes a little bit of a difference, maybe over time, so mm -hmm. over a long period of time. But if you eat a lot of red meat, it makes a difference. Now, I don't get any gut issues or anything from red, red meat at all. It's actually one of the most tolerable for me. However, I do notice... If it's not, if it's all grain fed meat, I'm more sore after my workouts and I'm more stiff. Mm -hmm. So I definitely have more inflammation in my body than I would when I do grass fed. Yeah. That's that's what I notice from it. Yeah, this yeah. is really interesting to me. What's unfolding? I mean, it it almost makes me want to try vegan out for a little while. Oh I'm my like, god, bro! Uh, <laughs> I just can't though. What are you trying just to do? I'm like, fuck it. I'll just I'll just have psoriasis. That's good. <laughs> <for me. laughs> just, I just, I just give up. At that point. I mean, that's just like, you may as well make me do CrossFit after that too. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Just hey, lock it. Throw in the towel. I'm doing hey, it all I'm now. All in. <laughs> I tell you again, dude. You got it. Look, we were uh, Jessica and I were watching this show on uh, Netflix about sleep. Uh, Headspace. Have you guys seen the Headspace? Uh, I've seen the app. Them. Okay, so they have yeah. an app, and then they have these videos on on Netflix. Okay, and they did one on sleep, and the first half of it was talking about all the ways you can improve your sleep, and then the back half was a meditation, right? So, mm. but we're watching the first part, and Jessica is just getting annoyed with the whole thing, and I'm like, "Why are you so annoyed, honey?" And she's like, "Because they're being irresponsible with the information they're providing." I'm like, "What do you mean?" She goes, "They're so general." She goes, "You know how how big of an individual variance there is with some of the stuff." For example, they said. Yeah, two or three cups of coffee before five is fine for sleep. And she's like, for some people, any caffeine That's not true. That's is not, not true, true for me. Right. And yeah. so, and she, and that's the point. And, and yeah. that's, I mean, she made an excellent point. And now you're making an excellent point. Like, 
I've had clients where they literally have issues to, with foods that you wouldn't even imagine. Bananas right. or an a, or apples or carrots. Or ca you know, like yeah. just the most off thing. That's why it's so important to listen to your own body because if you were like hard headed, if you weren't mm -hmm. like uh, you know self aware, yeah, and you're like, oh no, I, I heard this on a podcast. This is how I'm supposed to. Eat. Yeah, and you just ignored that you're, it's not working for you yeah. and just keep pushing through. Yeah, cause yourself problems. Well, yeah. it's interesting. I was having a bit of a conversation with my oldest about uh, he's kind of. Going through some changes, you know, we got him a book about everything, you know, about puberty and stuff. And oh, like, that's like, right, him and my daughter are the same age, that's yeah. Right. So it's like, you know, he's more interested now in like before about like building muscle and like how he can do it properly. And so he started to read in his book about you know getting more protein in his diet and stuff. And so he actually came to me and was like asking about it and how he could do it. And so you know, and, and we started to talk through it about why we always like try to you know highlight a you know like some kind of like whole foods and and, and meat source, you know, in our, in our dinners and a lot of our meals, we center around that first mm -hmm. uh, for that specific reason. But also, you know, I know for me as, as I was growing, developing, I need even more than that. And so like I, you know, in there, they kind of highlighted protein shakes. And so we kind of talked, we, we had a little bit of a talk about that and like how to do that. And like, maybe we should just try it and see, you know, what he thinks and stuff. And so I had some Organifi there, uh, to, for him to try. And so he tried the, the, the chocolate one and, uh, you know, we had it blended with ice and then, and milk and so we, we tried both options but he likes the one where it's just like with ice but I don't know it's kind of it's like nostalgic for me to kind of see like Isn't this whole great? progression of like oh, I'm interested in like protein shakes and getting gains dad now would you would you let him ha now did you push him in the in the organified direction instead of whey for any particular reason no not for particular reason other than he tried he tried whey uh, as well but like uh, he actually preferred the, the organify so I just really was like, okay you know yeah he, he liked the, the, the taste of that better because so, organify is no, there, no, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Organifi is the best vegan protein out there. I, I, I've i tried so many, and I don't think any of them. They're but, not even close. But I still think that way. So it depends, right? So Katrina, we just had this conversation yesterday because she made um, oatmeal with the Organifi. She's like, why does it taste? Why do, I, When you make this for me, it doesn't taste this. I said, because when I make the oatmeal, I mix with whey. I said, and whey, when it, it's like a, if it's savory stuff, or with food, I like way better. I love Organifi stuff when you mix it with tardy stuff mm. because it got or like it, fruit. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. right. So like berry, strawberries, blueberries, bananas. Yep. Yep. Yeah, like, you do that with the vanilla ones. Really yeah, good. bomb. Yeah. Like, but if I go chocolate, peanut butter, savory direction, mm -hmm. I like I like way Me better too. for that. This is more well, creamy. And, yes, yeah, you, yes. I, I'm with you. Well, I know so Sal hard. doesn't have an option, but no, I mean, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I used to drink whey when I was a kid, but the Organifi saved the day with the, with their yeah. protein for sure. Now, now you've done the sex talk with your son yes so okay. yeah and it's, it's funny because we we really didn't get that far with it but like all of a sudden now he thinks he's like an expert you know he's like, oh yeah like some some people will be making out on the screen or something oh, he's no. like, oh i know where this is going right yeah, <laughs> I'm like, right, Dad? It's like, well, yeah i don't know like, let's see how this plays yeah, out no. he really said some shit <laughs> yeah. like that <laughs> i would does. fucking fall off my chair Bro, you guys would die because he's uh he's in this funny period now where he's getting some attention from girls girls and stuff and so he's he's actually like he's been really like focused on one but then all of a sudden now one of his friends like older sister was like oh here's my handle for roblox like let's hang out oh no so he's like on there like chatting with her he's like yeah i'm chatting with elizabeth <laughs> i'm like what about kendall <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 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 her too i don't want, i don't want to tie myself down <laughs> i'm like whoa dude like, you're, you're way farther than i was so so age. my daughter she's also in fifth grade and she's She's a young fifth grade. And what I mean by that is I remember when I was in fifth grade, I was, a, I knew everything. I mean, I was, it wasn't good. Well, I was right? kissing girls at that time. I mean, we time, were right? talking about all kinds of crazy. Me too. My daughter is very naive when it comes to this kind of stuff. So anyway. Or I, really smart. No, 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 no. She, <laughs> I know she's naive. I know. I just like to fuck with you I about know, that. <laughs> but I know she is because oh, things man. will be said and stuff. And then my son will laugh and she'll be like, what, what? Tell me. And anyway, so I, we were all going on a walk. And I took, I took the baby for a longer walk and Jessica walked back with the kids. Well, anyway, I think my daughter felt like, cause Jessica will answer any question. She's not like embarrassed. So the kids can say any, whereas I try to be, but I'm sure they can sense in me that I'm almost like, oh no, this is one of those questions. So anyway, they, they walk home. So my daughter just started asking questions about sex. And so Jessica's talking about the whole thing, about everything, wow. everything. So how does it work? How does it get in there? 
What does that look like? Why do people do wow. it? Like everything. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yes. So then I came home and then a little later I, I was like, hey, I heard you guys talked about whatever. And then, you know, we started having more conversations like, oh my God, my daughter's growing up, dude. Wow. wow. This is so. And it's all happening. It's, it's like, oh, too fast. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to hear your experience because, he, I mean, Justin's got two boys. So I, I feel like it's going to be so different having an older boy who you've talked sex well, to and now having a daughter. Well, and it's great if she's comfortable to talk to you about that. Too, yeah. Well, mean. this is the, this is what I love is that later on, we were all hanging out. It was my son, my daughter, uh, uh, Jessica and I, and of course the baby. And my daughter is asking just out in the open. And this, this is a good sign, right? She's not feeling embarrassed. She's asking period stuff. Mm -hmm. How does a tampon work? And why, why would I use that over this? And, 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 you know, and my son's not embarrassed. I'm like, this is good. Yeah. When I was a kid, you, we didn't even utter the word sex. No, it's great because oh, I know, me either. if you don't, if they don't come to you and say that, they go to their friends or they'll yeah. go Google. Yeah, yeah, like Google which is, now, I guess yeah. Google's a step better than your friends, yeah. right? But I mean, not no, that's always. All we had when we were growing up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we had our not, stupid friends, brothers, it, you know? and Google might not be. There's yeah. all kinds of crazy shit that's on the true. internet. That's so, true. but yeah, there, she was asking these questions. But when I was a kid, like I remember, you know, the first time my parents actually talked about sex around me was after I got married. After I got married, <laughs> Dude, all of I a know. sudden, my mom's huh. making sex jokes. I'm like, Same. sorry. And you, it's too much. Yeah. And you're like, no, no, this is awkward. Yeah. Like, you, you, you missed your window. Exactly. Yeah. I'm like, mom, the boat has sailed. That's really <laughs> awkward now. So that's, have, <laughs> yeah. I, have I ever shared, I've shared on this, have I shared on the podcast? I know I've talked to you guys about it. I know like Justin knows a little more because he knows Katrina's mom pretty well, but Katrina's mom is like- Very open. She, yeah. Very, very. I mean- it, She cracks me up dude, with that stuff. Isn't she? Yeah, she's, she's like- a trip. And very forward about it. Like, Super, yeah. If it's on her mind- Mind, she's an gonna, open book. Yeah, she's going to ask it. It's you know, it, what, we've been together eleven years now, or going on eleven years. Um, very weird uh, at first, especially because I'm kind of like my family was kind of quiet about it, and I was the oldest, so definitely I think they learned to have those conversations exactly. with the next kids yeah. more. You know, yeah. me it was like you yeah. know we learned about like oh we probably should have talked to him about that shit earlier. So uh, when we first started dating, like. I remember we'd be sitting at a dinner table with like her brothers, sisters, there was like 12 people there. And like her mom, like just like mid like dinner would ask her like, honey, are you giving Adam blowjobs? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, just looking straight ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even want to make eye contact with anybody at the table. Like are Adam's over here like, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But You're like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mrs. Garcia, actually, <laughs> yeah. I could use a few more. Can yeah, you please yeah. talk to your daughter. Yeah. yeah, or she'll or she'll make comments like Pretty when we come over, I haven't seen her a couple of days, and like, honey, your skin looks amazing. You guys must be having incredible sex lately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, Mom. I said, really? Like, do you... But she's like, but you know what, though? But she cares, which it's, is great. It is cool, though. Now that I've gotten used to it and I've been around it long enough, it, the family is. They're so unbelievably cl close that- Whenever something someone has a question about anything, and no matter what age, you know what I'm saying? If the, the little nephew who's coming into age yeah. right now at 13 and asking questions like that, that dynamic has been such an op so open like that that everybody's very comfortable sharing and helping. Yeah, so, yeah. well, it's, you want them to be open because then you know what's going on. Otherwise, you don't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, mean, I spent some crazy time over the weekend. Uh, Courtney was gone visiting a friend in Idaho, and so I was like trying to figure out what to do with the kids all weekend. And so I was like... You know, we're going on hikes. I'm trying to get the dogs. I'm trying to get everybody like exhausted. And we went to go pick her up at SFO. So I went and took them to San Francisco earlier. So they've never been to like the city or like seen anything, uh, you know, up there because I just pretty much avoid it like the plague. But uh, <laughs> apparently, there's still some nice areas, and it's usually like the real touristy spots. So we went to like Fisherman's Wharf and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was so funny. I had to share this because we we're walking down the street. And uh, apparently there's like a, a lot of guys come through with their hot rods or their like low riders or, you know, all this stuff. And they, rum, rum, you know, like get, get on it and try to get attention and all this stuff. And so, um, you know, this this kind of band of low rider dudes are, are like driving down and, and one of them's like, like slamming on the road and all oh, this stuff. Yeah. It, the it, hydro. Oh, yeah. And Ethan was like, yeah, that's so awesome. Cool. It was just like, what's up, homies? And I was just like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. I was dying inside. I was like trying to hide, you know. And he's like, yeah. They're like, oh, yeah. They like, totally were like, like playing into it with him. And yeah. he's like dancing with the things like, 
slamming. I'm that's like, so great. I'm like, oh my god, dude. That's so great. Uh, well, I'm in it now, so I'm like, I'm like doing it with them, you know. <laughs> oh god, dude, I haven't so seen. Embarrassing. I haven't seen a low rider with hydros in a long time, dude. dude apparently, there's they're still out there. Oh, yeah, I so, love them. Just yeah. cruise over to East Side San Jose. They're all. <laughs> I know. I haven't right. seen yeah. this so like. I remember when I was in high school, there was a couple guys. You know, they do the three wheel and they get up on three wheels. I mean, Cinco de Mayo. You see the. I mean, for the old day, for <laughs> straight up. It, I used to live on Allen Rock, which is an extension yeah. to downtown Santa Clara. Oh, yeah. So you're. So, and w- my parking lot was the turnaround spot. So everybody came through. So everybody came through the front of my house and flipped around and went back down the other way. So, like. Playing wow. oldies and everything. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, that's I awesome. mean, cool if you decide you want to stay, right? So if I decided that, okay, this thing went to my I'm going to stay here and I'm going to watch all the cars and that's going to be my thing. That's get a your, good time. Yeah, uh-huh. get your lawn chair out, have a beer, and just enjoy yourself. I love those bikes that they, uh, they fabricate, yeah. you know, with the crazy, like, wire rims yes. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they make some our, sick bikes. One of our OG listeners, yes. shout out to Aaron. Aaron yes. Aaron's got a couple of those, I think. Oh, he's yeah, he's hardcore. He's got those lowrider bikes. That's yeah. awesome. Those things get expensive, dude. They put some money in there. That's a lot of time and energy. And yeah, I want one of those, dude. Looking that way. <laughs> hey, real quick, I wanted to bring this up. I forgot to bring this up earlier. Did you, did you guys see the controversy over uh, Rogan's comments on the vaccine? I yes. did. What? I did see that. Uh, it makes me so. He didn't even say anything real crazy, did he? No, he he really was just kind of saying that um, he didn't really think if you're young, you're healthy, you know, you're taking your vitamins, you're working out, you're doing all the right things, like you're not really that susceptible to having a really bad experience with COVID. Like I don't know that vaccine is probably Dude, you know you appropriate. It. it should be for everybody else that's susceptible yeah, to. He's it, right? getting he got hammered. So, for that. but, but yeah. I saw the meme that was one of the best memes I've ever seen. In my whole this is why memes are so amazing. I saw the best meme. It said. Joe Rogan has the same medical degree as Bill Gates. Yeah, I was like, wow, there it is. that yeah. is really good. Yeah. That brings up a good, very, very good point. But I mean, he's got an opinion. Okay. Right, right. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying this podcast, but head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides. We have a lot of great free written information you can download that can help you with all kinds of fitness goals. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from the real Anthony G. What's the mind pump stance on two a days? Oh, love them if you do them right. So mm. two a days, it's uh, advanced. Yeah, two a days. Uh, basically, okay. So this is what it is. If you don't know what that is, basically you're working out twice a day. Okay. Now here's where I'd say our stance is not in support of two a days. Let's say you do your normal workout, which is let's say an hour long, and then you want to add another hour long workout later in the day. You're gonna overdo it. The two a days that I think are good is when you take your normal workout and divide it into two workouts. And studies actually support the mm. performance benefits from working out this way. There were studies done on cardio. There were studies that have been done on resistance training. I've tested this out myself. Of course, the the, the challenge is time. You know, I don't have necessarily yeah. easy for me to schedule two workouts in a day. But if you take your total workout. And you can break it up into two workouts. Most people will notice uh, some benefits. It's actually more ideal, and we would love it if you know people had that kind of time on their hands where they could devote uh, more of their day towards very specific types of exercises and movements that are going to benefit them. It's just the reality of that is really the schedule is the monster that usually is the you know the big deterrent for a lot of people to mm-hmm. stay consistent. So, if you have that kind of accessibility and availability, really you just have to figure out like what the right dose is intensity wise volume wise uh for you to make that work uh so you're not overdoing it would be the big challenge well the way that you guys are explaining it right now is this is how i train right now because i have the gym now at my house and then we have here so sometimes what will happen is like a morning i'll get busy doing stuff i won't do a full workout in here i'll go do two or three exercises and then when i get home i'll do two or three more exercises to finish my workout i I love that and i think there's tremendous benefit to that especially after i've been sitting in the car for like an hour and then i and i've been sitting down at a podcast before that and then i go get another workout and move again so I see tons of value there. Now we have a program, Maps PED, which is a a double day hardcore program. Yeah. That type of training, uh, similar to how I got to uh, training when I was uh, competing, but that was towards the end of my competing career. I scaled That's at the very pinnacle of yes. your training. So we we have a program, but it was it was the last program that we did for a specific reason. It was that you should have gone through all the other MAPS programs before you dabble it. There's no reason for somebody to go to double days like that where there's that much volume in it 
unless you've already kind of scaled up to that. Otherwise, you're missing all the great benefits of doing a lot less volume and getting more results. Yeah, and I mean, for sports, uh, there was a way. I, I honestly liked using the the double day uh, for getting in shape and conditioning. Um, that I, that was very effective because I could split it up and it wasn't like uh, I would just fatigue myself to where I couldn't even walk. Like I would st- cut, we'd cut it about halfway through, you know, get some food in us uh, and, and, and recover coop and then come back and then attack it again, which actually, you know, we were able to adapt to, to uh, more endurance pretty quickly. Well, for sports, that makes sense, yeah. right? And to your point right there, you wanted to get adapted quickly so you could perform on the field. Like, exactly. That's different than somebody who's like chasing aesthetics that wants to actually mm-hmm. improve their fit. Like they want to build more muscle, burn more body fat, going from where you're probably current, current currently at to a super double day type of training is more than you need. Yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, splitting up your workouts throughout the day, you do increase your body's capacity to handle some volume. It's not a huge, massive, crazy difference, but it does increase your body's capacity to handle more volume. Like I, I've done tests on myself where I'll do you know three sets of three exercises every other hour. So I'll start at like eight a.m. and I'll stop at like five p.m. I keep the intensity very moderate, by the way, so it's not a high-intensity workout. And at the end of that day, if I count the volume and the sets, like it's way more volume than I would be able to handle in one workout. But because I split it up throughout a bunch of mini workouts throughout the day, my body was able to handle it. I didn't overtrain, and I felt okay. So there's some of that with these split-type workouts as well. So if if your workout is taking you an hour and a half, and you're like, you know, I want to add a little bit more volume, but I don't know if my body could handle it. You can definitely experiment with, you know, two 50-minute workouts rather than doing, you know, a two-hour workout. Maybe try two one-hour workouts and see how that feels. That's splitting it up where you allow you can feed yourself, allow your body to recover a little bit, and then go back to the gym. It might be it might be just what you need, but it requires a lot of time, a lot of dedication. Your, your life is revolves around working out when you do it that way. Let's be honest. Next question is from Once Upon a Picture. How do you mitigate your digestive system acting up when bulking? You know, this is my limiting mm, factor always. Yeah. My, for me, because, because my uh, my gut is just so sensitive and just gets on my nerves, this is always my limiting factor when it comes to putting on muscle. I can push it a little bit, and then my gut acts up and I have to kind of back off. Now, the way that I've managed it is- You just came off of that recently, right? Yeah. Happened, right? Because you, yeah. you were starting to put some good size on, and the, what made you come back the other way was exactly I, that, My right? gut. It's always my gut, right? So what I, what I ha- well, now, here's how I kind of work with it a little bit. I have to completely stay away from foods that bother my digestion, even in the slightest, especially when my calories go up. So like, I'll give you an example. Normally, under normal circumstances, I can handle potatoes. They don't bother me. If I'm bulking, I got to cut potatoes out because they start to bother me. Um, I can handle rice, but not a ton of rice. I can handle a lot of fats and a lot of proteins, and that's pretty much it. Anything beyond that, and it starts to really bother me. Now, it's really hard to bulk with that limited, you know, kind of choices that I have. So that's always my limiting factor. So I would say the number one thing, and even people without gut issues, what you'll find is they'll say things like, oh, I feel so bloated. I can't eat any more food. Um, I feel so stuffed. Avoid foods that that bother your digestion. So that mm-hmm. means you're probably not going to be able to eat as much junk food. You're probably going to have to avoid things like yeah. gluten and dairy. Some people need to avoid uh, legumes. Stick with the very easily digestible food. You'll be able to consume more of it and assimilate more figure, of it. Yeah, figure out what those easily digestible carbohydrates are specifically too because that's one of those that uh, like with rice or something like that, that's a little easier on my stomach. Like, it, And I know like, um, was it the the guy's name that's like Rhino or whatever? He yeah, does yeah, the yeah. Stan Efferding. Stan Efferding. Uh, I love that though. I love to add like the, the bone broth in there and then, you know, if I could put some ground meat in yeah. there and like have that all in one sitting, it's, you know, beef up the calorie amount a bit, but uh, it's something that's going to sit in my stomach and not just tear me up. So I actually, this is where I love to use either a a day of fasting or just like a really low calorie day too. Mm -hmm. So like if I've been like increasing calories, increasing calories, increasing calories, starting to notice like inflammation or whatever, or my digestive system starting to bother me, then running a fast the next day or just, uh, you know, a series of two or three days that are really low cal, like 500 to 1,000 calories, which is kind of like mimicking similar to a fast, Mm -hmm. doing that for two or three days, resetting, and then going back to the bulk again, I find a lot of value in that also. But 
you definitely want to start to find out uh, what foods are offending you for sure. Cause that it could be just simply that it could be simply your, whatever it is you're bulking with, there could be something in there that is your, your body is definitely going, no, I don't want that much of that. Yeah. Gone are the days for me of where I could just bulk, just eat you know, whatever. Oh, I mean, there was, there was a period there, like, you know, my, my teens and twenties where I was like, I could just eat more and more and put on more weight. And now my body goes, no, you, not only are you not going to put on weight, you're going to lose weight because. Well, and gonna- the truth is that's what got us here. I yeah. mean, that's the reason why all those things do bother us is because we used to, and that's what I think it's so hard, right? To get a 20 year old kid, yeah. you know, to listen to this mm-hmm. right now, yeah, they're, but they're bulletproof right now. Yeah. But that's, I mean, the reason why we have to fucking eliminate all this stuff now is because we bulked with everything. And yeah. so aggressively when we were younger and now you're extra sensitive to all that stuff. Next question is from B Balks. What is the best way to approach training obese clients? Yeah. Okay. So mm. uh, obese clients. So we're talking about people who are in that kind of clinically obese, but which by the way, now is a, a pretty big percentage yeah, uh, 40 something of, percent. of the population now. But when you're training someone like this, uh, consider that the psychological piece is far more important than the mechanisms uh, that are involved with, uh, with weight loss. Okay. So obviously we know if they ate less and they moved more and they exercised that they would lose weight. That's obvious but it's not even close to that easy. Okay, you're dealing with someone who you have to completely get them to change their relationship to food. They have to change their relationship to exercise and how they how they are with their own body. That takes some time. So one of the first things I like to do is I like to uh, I incorporate strength training and I tell them they're not going to lose any weight for at least a couple months. So for the first two months, we're not going to lose any weight. My goal with you is to strengthen your body and get your metabolism to speed up a little bit. And I know know if you get stronger and your weight doesn't change, then we probably have lost some fat Mm -hmm. and gained some muscle. Then when when it comes to the diet, um, I like to try to add things before I take things out. Um, So, And why? Because it's different. It feels different. feels different to somebody to say, don't eat these anymore versus, hey, look, uh, don't change anything else. Just make sure that you eat... 130 grams of protein every day. So make sure that you hit that first. If you hit that, I don't, I'm not. I don't care about anything else. But you know, through doing that, that that'll get them to naturally want to eat a little less anyway because of the, the satiety effects, for example, of protein. But I mean, in a nutshell, it's a very slow, measured approach. It's not the we're going to get this weight off you because that's what you hired me for type of deal. Because you will fail in the long run. I mean, that's pretty much exactly how probably all of us you know, go towards. This. I'll add yeah. one thing. Uh, on the exercise portion, because when they would be with me, the goal would that I'm going to strength train. Like so, and strength mm-hmm. training, by the way, uh, for this person could look vastly different, right? So uh, sometimes strength training was holding their hand and them getting standing up and sitting down on a chair. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now I've also had obese clients that could still put a barbell on their back and actually get a pretty decent squat. Mm-hmm. So depending on where I'm going to meet them, wherever their level is for strength training, and that we're going to primarily focus on strength training with me. Then this is where, and I think I brought this up a long time ago on the show. Um, I used to get these uh, colored dots, and I, a client like this, I used to love to do this, where I'd, I'd put them, have them put it sporadically through the house, on the refrigerator, maybe on their bathroom mirror, maybe by the TV. And when they saw this, I would get the, they would do something. And every client was different, unique. What, what sometimes it was mobility work, sometimes it was body weight squats, sometimes it was a sit up or whatever. But I'd have like little things that are just. 10, 10 sets or 10, or excuse me, 10 reps of something just to keep them moving and trying to implement just more movement in their like a little day. reminder. Yeah, just a little reminder. When you see that dot, go do this. If you yeah. see that dot, go mm-hmm. do that. Or, you know, encouraging them to walk more and move more. Normally, people mm-hmm. that are in this obese category, depending on how far we're talking, like if we're going all the way to morbidly obese, they're extremely sedentary. And mm-hmm. so yeah. I just want to find little ways that I can create more and not extreme ways, not biggest loser style, mm-hmm. not let's go to boot camp and get the ropes out and do crazy shit. No, things that I know that they'll continue on forever just saying, "Hey, this is what you'd normally do at this time. Let's add this." Yeah. And no, get I love that. I, I I completely did the same thing, but I didn't have like a system like that, which I think that's, you know, that's really smart. Uh it was always just like what they could do 
uh, you, you know, after the shower, what they could do while they have the TV on instead of sitting down. They're like just trying to address a lot of like normal tendencies and patterns that, you know, they usually are doing or like they're going out to get food or like what that looks like, how they could, you know, get more involved when actually mm-hmm. making it at home. And so I spent a lot more time actually going to the grocery stores with them and walking through and, you know, really like figuring out like what what type of decisions they were they were making and then and how we could just, you know, modify one thing within that same mindset. So. Yeah, you have to appreciate that you're what you're the person what you're asking the person to do is to change their life. This is not a, I don't mean that in in the lightest at all, right? The reason why somebody's obese is because of their life. That doesn't that's just not the time they spend with you. That's everything, right? It's just how they are in the way that they live. You're asking this person to completely change that. That's what it would require for them to go from obese to lean. And so this is no small task. Anybody watching this right now, change your life completely and then make it stick forever. Yeah, That's a very difficult thing to do. I don't care what it is you're asking yourself to do. So this is a very slow process you need to appreciate. And then I want to go back to the, the you know what we've talked about with resistance training in regards to obese individuals. There's this myth that obese individuals have a lot of muscle and that they just need to do cardio. I don't need to get bigger. Look how big I am. Lift weights. No, no, no. Studies are clear on this. Obese individuals have low muscle mass. They actually have very little muscle. They're actually underneath frail. In fact, osteopenia, bone loss, is more common in the obese, even though they're heavy. So there's this myth that, no, don't lift weights because you're not trying to get big. You already probably have a lot of math. I've seen people say this, like, oh, I don't need to build. I mean, yeah, you, can see that. That I'm, you can see that I'm thick. The truth is, these days, because we're so sedentary, everybody has low muscle mass. And people who are obese, especially when they start to develop insulin resistance, their body actually starts to get even weaker and they start to lose even more muscle. So yeah. the truth is, strength- it's more pain and more problems. That's right. Strengthen their bodies, build some muscle, and that'll pay them dividends. Next question is from Not So Fluffy Dev. I'm a single father of two young boys living miles away from friends and family. How did your clients stay consistent with their training and what type of workouts did you suggest to someone who had a few minutes to themselves at night after the kids were put to bed? Is it possible to build a healthy metabolism with only body weight exercises and no access to gym equipment. Yes, it is. Yeah. And so here, okay, here's something that is just, this is a very important lesson to understand when it comes to, well, probably everything in life, but let's talk about exercise here and fitness for a second, is that there are things in your life that are just uncontrollables, right? So you're a single dad of two kids, by the way, um, you know, I, I commend you. Uh, it's, a, it's hard enough being a father with a wife. I can't imagine being a, a single father. So it's really, really tough. So Obviously, they're important to you. You're not going to change that. Your life is busy. Okay, there's nothing you can do about that. So let's work with that. Okay, you got a few minutes at night. That's enough time to do two or three exercises. And so, what I would do with this person, if this was my client, is I'd say, do two or three exercises every single night when you put the kids to bed and you have a little bit of time to yourself. So rather than doing long workouts, which you don't have the time to do three days a week, then fine, do 10 minutes you know, seven days a week, right? 10 minutes, seven days a week is 70 minutes of exercise. Um, and especially if you do slow movements, even though you don't have equipment, you provide, a, you create a lot of tension with the increased frequency of training on an almost regular basis, you will definitely see uh, positive results. I mean, I would love to see this person take a page of the last question that we talked about with the, the two-a-days, right? So maybe, maybe you don't get, you know, a full hour at the end of the day, but maybe you have 10, 15 minutes multiple times throughout the day right. and do a program like our uh, MAP suspension trainer. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting the suspension trainer, having it hooked up somewhere at your house. And so maybe you're prepping dinner and you can go over and mm-hmm. get like 15 pushups on it. Then you're doing stuff later on with the kids and you can do some bicep. Cr- I mean, I would do, you know, I'd have a goal of like exercises that I can do on that, you know, or follow the program. So you get an idea what's in there. And then I would break them up throughout the day. Everybody has this idea that you have to sit down or not sit down, go to the gym or be working out for an hour for it to be really effective. I mean, Mm. you could break this up in four 10 minute sessions throughout the day and get incredible shape that way. In fact, probably better shape that way. So you don't have to confine yourself to this only this only this one block of time that you feel this freedom you know, get something like that that's versatile that you can just hang up in your house or take with you to the park and go places 
And when you can strap it up and do a few movements, this is probably one of the single greatest things that's changed with my own training. Yeah. It took me a while to, to get to this point because even myself as a trainer thought like this way, that oh, if I didn't get that full hour hard workout, it wasn't mm -hmm. good enough. I train a lot of times one exercise, you know, or just a couple in the day or, you yeah. know, broken up like little that. Little bites like that. I think that's perfect. Yeah. If if you can just find those opportunities, I mean, there's, and to, to address the body weight thing, like we created an entire program for body weight with, you know, maps anywhere. And that's something too, that you could split up, you know, into chunks and do 15 minutes, you know, like you're saying, or, you know, and, and there's lots of ways to really intensify that. If that's what your worry is that like, I'm not getting enough intensity in these exercises, you know, there's a lot of ways to challenge your body from different angles uh and progress uh, just by body weight but uh you know it's it it requires you to follow something that's very specifically you know laid out yes and in, in low to moderate intensity done very frequently over time produces great results it, it you don't have to always train uh super hard i had a client like this uh and she would work out twice a day 15 minutes each time. So there was like in the morning and then she would do it uh, when her kids went to school. And so she did 30 minutes a day, but she did it every single day and she was in phenomenal shape. And so she figured out a way to work it into her schedule. And those short workouts, again, if you do, if you do them frequently, you're going to get great results. And here's the thing, even if you're limited, even if you're limited to one of them, it's still more than nothing yeah. and it's still going to improve. It just keeps that signal alive. That's and, right. And that's what you need to focus on. Yeah, what you don't want to do and this is the this is the challenge is you don't want to get stuck in a situation where you say yeah, a little bit is is not enough therefore I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. Okay? A little bit is better than nothing. A little bit is a lot better yeah. than nothing. That's the important thing here to to pay attention to. Look, if you like our content, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Go there, check out our free guides. We have guides that help you burn body fat, build muscle. We even have guides for personal trainers. Also, come find us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. When you're working out, you're developing neural pathways. You're actually training and growing your brain. That's why you learn skills and techniques, and that's why you get better at them. Not just because your muscles get stronger, but rather because your central nervous system also learns to adapt. There's literally an infinite number of exercises and ways to perform each exercise, and it's actually encouraged.